The Tom Woods Show, episode 746. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Folks, don't be envious of me just because I'm getting the best shave of my life. Join me. Get your free trial set from Harry's. That's a razor, five-blade cartridge, and shaving gel. Plus, they're tossing in a post-shave balm. And all you got to do is pay three smackers for shipping. So head over to harrys.com. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S dot com. And enter code WOODS. Hello, everybody. Tom Woods here, and I think you know what this episode is all about. Of course, it's another post-debate commentary. You haven't had one of these in months and months now, but Lou Rockwell is here for the traditional post-debate discussion. Of course, you know Lou is the founder and chairman of the Mises Institute at Mises.org, M-I-S-E-S.org, one of the greatest websites in the history of the world. This alone makes him one of the world's great benefactors uh, for for all good folks out there. He also served as chief of staff to Ron Paul. He publishes LouRockwell.com, which all the cool people read every day. And he's all around a great guy. When you're at LouRockwell.com, you want to look at his blog. And he's got two blogs there. In particular, you want to look at the political theater blog because there you can follow Lou's commentary. In fact, I'm going to ask Lou about the future of the political theater blog in just a minute. But I love reading that political theater blog because he, boy, does he dig up some juicy stories. Lou, good morning. Good morning, Tom. Great to be with you as usual. And after our long hiatus. Yes, I know. I know. It's been awful. Well, I don't know if... if, (laughs) (laughs) No, actually, it's not having to watch a debate's been good. Not talking to you has been awful. Uh, Before we get started, what's going to happen to the... Can you tell us what you're planning to do with the political theater blog after the election? Well, I think I'm going to just see what people want uh, by how much they read. So there are people who want to continue it, especially if Hillary is in the White House. Uh, there'll be a lot of hot stuff to talk about. But in, with Trump in the White House, too, there's I, I, my guess. So it may, it may continue if there's readership. It gets great readership now. And uh, that's what's going to ter- determine. I'm going to I'm going to continue it. If people don't, are not interested and don't read it, then um, I probably will not continue it. So I'm just going to let the people be the let the people be the judge. All right. How about that? Okay. So we'll well, I vote for you continuing it, but that's for my own selfish reasons. You get All more right. than one vote, Tom. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you very much. All right. What's your overall impression from last night? Well, I think that uh, Lester Holt was, of course, in the tank for for Hillary, like all the networks. Um, I think that uh, uh, just as a from the visuals, I thought that it was very interesting to see the two faces side by side during the entire debate. Uh, I thought that Trump, whatever was wrong with his facial expressions, was all honest. It was exactly what you could tell what Trump was thinking by looking at his face. Hillary was entirely phony. I mean, not only. Uh, what did they do to her while she's been away? Botox or has it some kind of Hollywood trick where they get rid of all her wrinkles and her jowls and her pouches and so forth? Or is it just super duper pancake makeup from outer space? I mean, it's, something happened and she, you know, she, she uh, looks like a, uh, a younger Cruella de Vil. She had a nice hairdo and she pretended to be ha 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 laughing the whole time. Yes, isn't this funny? Uh, and that, of course, was phony because, you know, uh, she would have, like Glenn Beck, she would have loved to stab Trump if she'd gotten the chance. And she certainly has uh, killed a lot of people in her life. So I guess that uh, she must get a charge out of that. So there was that. I think that um, she did a better job of sort of the, in the traditional sense. And she this was her 40th debate of this sort, Trump's first. On the other hand, Trump, he uh, he did no, nowhere near as well as he could have. I think that um, he didn't go after her about the Clinton Foundation, which she's going on and on, for example, about all the world leaders she saw and the travel she took. And he could have said, uh, how many of them bribed you through the Clinton Foundation? Yeah, right. And he, he talked very little about the emails. Um, and, uh, you know, he didn't talk about all the things wrong with her. He, and, of course, he said uh, that he didn't bring up personal stuff. He could have said when she's talking about he's mean to women, uh, why didn't he say something like, you know, Hillary, we have to look at your record of attacking the women your husband had victimized yeah. again and again and again. That's all. I mean, he didn't have to bring up, bring up details. Uh, that would have been enough. It would have knocked her off. Uh, she was pretty much on, tar- on, uh, uh, you know, on topic the whole time. I think that would have knocked her off uh, since Lester Holt was never going to ask anything like that. Um, so on the but how did the what happened? I think uh, I don't think any Trump voters changed their minds. 
I don't think any Hillary voters changed their mind. Uh, but if you were paying attention to her, how shall I say this? Trump just seems more of a human being. She's more of a robot and a very, a very nasty robot. And I, I think uh, I wish he'd, you know, he talked about how, of course, he would renounce a first strike. Um, but I think we all understand that she's the one most likely to start a nuclear war. She's going on and on about Russia and espionage. He should have said, you know, you leaked far more as national security things in your emails. Uh, and as to, you know, and I thought at the very end when he was asked if he would support her if, if she won, would he accept the results? Uh, you know, I think he should have said, uh, well, I think, of course, if the Electoral College votes that way or if it's a tie, the House of Representatives, uh, yes, I would accept those results. But if the election had been rigged, if exactly as uh, uh, Mrs. Clinton did to Bernie Sanders and stole the nomination from him, the state of California and other places, as clearly revealed in the leaks from the DNC, and I urge everybody to look at those leaks, even though uh, Mrs. Clinton doesn't want you to, um, you know, and I think he should have, when she was going after him about he hates women and so forth, I guess he couldn't have said this, but what I would have loved him to have said was, you know, I know it's the first rule of feminism that... Don't you dare ever treat a woman any differently than a man, by the way, but don't ever criticize a woman. So, you know, he said, he said plenty of guys are fat and ugly and so forth, uh, and uh, uh, that's his style. Nobody cares. So when he says it about Rosie O'Donnell, it's supposed to be, a, you know, a hate crime of gargantuan proportions. I also think he should have come back at her when she called every single white American a racist. I mean, so in other words, everything that's wrong – um, with uh, many aspects of the country, it's the white man's fault, the straight white man, of course. So that's uh, – uh, he, he has been the one guy to talk against political correctness. I wish, I wish he'd done that. Um, so I think uh, this was the first one. There are two more to go. Uh, he's got a chance to uh, hone his game, and I, my guess is he will. I think he listened to some bad advice uh, about treating her – uh, in this professorial manner or whatever, and he should have gone after Lester Holt. I think in the next, you know, these, these. Uh, I think it's she called him by the way Donald during the entire thing. He always called her um, Secretary Clinton, Secretary Clinton, and so forth. And he called Lester Holt Lester. Shouldn't have called Lester Holt. He should have called him Mister Holt. It makes it easier to attack him, and he should have attacked him. His people love it. Americans don't trust the media. They don't like the media. Um, I don't know if you saw the hilarious um, article in the Washington Post uh, yesterday saying, don't call us the media. We're not just one blob. We're all individual newspapers and TV stations all <laughs> yeah. you know, seeking the truth and so forth. Well, <laughs> they're, they are a blob. So it's uh, – he should attack the media. He should attack her. Uh, and she, she certainly got out the knife and tried to slit his throat right at the end in the most personal and nasty way, showing f for, the, for the moment the real Hillary – peeking out of that mask of pancake. And um, so I, I think, I think in my guess is he learned. I, I don't know whether this is Kellyanne, his is a campaign manager responsible for this. My guess is it's not the Breitbart guy. Uh, but I think, I, think, uh, I think he'll do better the next time. And uh, I think this didn't, th this didn't change anything. And as, as uh, Joe Bob Briggs pointed out, he said, that, you know, if we judge this by the, the Rocky standard, um, he's still standing after a fight with somebody who's far more experienced. And he said he had to sort of give it to him on points for that reason. So um, I don't know. Is it? Uh, I was disappointed in a lot of what he didn't do. I was disappointed in some of the things he did do. I wish he talked about the Fed more. I wish he talked about what's wrong with NATO more. I wish he talked about – he did bring up the Fed, so that was excellent. And, and Hillary, who of course has said – the no president and no candidate for president should ever even discuss the Fed because it can roil the markets. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, so he could have talked about – maybe he could have talked about how it looked like Janet Yellen and Hillary were separated at birth. I, I guess he couldn't talk about that. But it's uh, – so he brought up some good things. He didn't bring up enough good things. My guess is he'll do better. He can he's, – he's a learner. He's smart. Uh, maybe he had bad advice. Maybe it was his own, his own introspection. But uh, – I think two and three are going to be a heck of a lot more interesting. All right, let's uh, let me go through some of the points you made. I, first of all, I want to tell people I'm very, very sorry to have to say this, but for the second debate, 
I won't be able to do a debate episode because the theme cruise that Bob Murphy and I are hosting sets sail that very day. And uh, we ain't going to be watching no presidential debate aboard uh, the <laughs> Royal Caribbean Liberty of the Seas. <laughs> That's not going to happen. But we will we will make sure and get to the third one and maybe to do penance. We'll, we'll do uh, Pence for Penance, we'll call it, as uh, Lou says. We'll, maybe we'll do the vice presidential debate. All right. Yeah, I want to review some things you said here. First of all, yeah, the media, we're not a blob. Don't call us the media. Okay, I'll call you the blob. I think blob is preferable. <laughs> so, so, uh, secondly, uh, mention of the Fed by a candidate roils the markets. Well, first of all, that that is a great argument against the Fed. Yeah. And, and secondly, that shows how – what a delicate flower our economy is right now. You can't even talk about one institution without ripple effects through the whole thing. Tom, the Fed needs a safe space. Yeah, you're darn right. Yeah, apparently so. I agree with you on the women of Clinton thing, that if that should have been automatic. As soon as she raises the claim that he's anti-woman, I mean, that should have been, yes. now you launch into your, and that goes to show, I am, frankly, I'm tired of people who say, I don't really need to prepare for a debate. You know, I'm just going to go in there and speak off the cuff. No, I feel like you owe it to the people who follow you, and you owe it to the ideas you say you believe in, to prepare as solidly as you possibly can. And it is not something to boast about that you don't prepare for debate. That is not something to boast about. You should be able to be human and totally in command of the facts, totally in command. He's letting her get away with everything. He's letting her get away with the 2008 recession was caused by <laughs> stupid people like you who want to lower taxes. What? You're going to stand there and let her say that? Yeah. I mean, you should give her an impromptu 30-second lesson on what really happened and talk about Chris Dodd if you want. You can talk about how bipartisan it would. Do whatever you want, but you don't stand there and take that. Then also – I was surprised. I mean, she looked in. I have to say, she looked in robust health. She didn't. Yes. She didn't uh, wither after ninety minutes. She didn't have a coughing fit. She didn't have anything. Now, Tom Mullen, who uh, who's been a guest on the show a couple times, said his suggested question that Lester Holt should ask is uh, to the both candidates: Can you tell us what medications both of you have taken in the last twenty four hours? But that <laughs> Lester did not chose not to ask that particular <laughs> question. All right. Let, let's now let's jump into some particular things. It's, of course, very bad that that Trump more or less agrees with her on paid medical leave. I did an episode on the problems with that, and uh, I'll link to that at tomwoods.com slash 746, the page for today. So I've already covered the economics of why paid family leave is actually not a good thing, and as usual, it's a case of we're helping families, but you're not really. But then she kept on, Hillary kept on talking in her discussion of her economic plans about investments. We want to make investments uh -huh. in green energy and infrastructure. So these are all basically fake jobs because once that job is – well, certainly infrastructure, once that's over, then what does the guy do? He's built a bridge to a job he doesn't have on the other side. What does he do? There's nothing long-term about that. It's all fake. And her, her criticism was that – that Trump allegedly believes in so-called trickle-down economics, where you, you give tax cuts to the rich and that stimulates the economy. He could have come back and said, how many people in this, in this audience have been hired by a poor person? Can anybody tell me that? Just something <laughs> simple so that they see his point. But again, he just sat there and took that. And he didn't say, man, your investments are nothing like my investments that actually turn a profit. They're just a bunch of political hacks rewarding their friends. It's all cronyism. But again, missed opportunity, sailing right over, because unfortunately, what he has very much in abundance in terms of enthusiasm, he just – he lacks in terms of intellectual curiosity. It's very, very disappointing. He was letting her get, a, yeah. get away with murder last night. And of course, she has gotten away with murder. Yeah, I, know. I meant more figurative oh. this time. <laughs> but you're right. He mentioned the Fed, that it's political and that we're in a big bubble. Yes, yes. And I mean, that's more than any other candidate. She didn't dare come back at him over that. Not a word. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah, not a word. Now, what do you think about the tax return thing? Well, I think it. I think it hurts some, but I don't think it's. I don't think it's. I think he let himself get rattled by it. He should have been prepared for it, um, and he should have had – he should have uh, – you know, he could have said, as, as you pointed out, 
Um, you release your Goldman Sachs speeches. You release all your deleted emails. Uh, I'll release it, even though my lawyers tell me, well, we're under audit. It's not smart to do it, but I'll, I'll go ahead and do it. Um, I don't think, you know, the, I, I don't think people are going to vote or not vote for him based on whether he's released his, his tax returns. On the other hand, uh, it discombobulated him last night. So, and of course, with, uh, with the help of, uh, uh, Lester Holt too. So, um, and I don't think he handled the birther thing well. I wish he hadn't ever addressed it to begin with. Um, I, the, some people say that was Mike Pence responsible for him wanting to address it. He just should have said, uh, I mean, he could have said something like, this would be very hot. He could have said something, you know, we know less about Barack Obama than any president we've ever had by a mile. So there's lots of stuff. We don't know anything about his family. We don't know anything about his background. We just know the, the, the uh, little press releases that the uh, government and the media have uh, put out for us. So um, is he a citizen? Well, okay. I'm, uh, but I'd like to know about his background. I mean, what's the real truth about this guy? And I think it's probably a good idea that he, you know, said that the Clinton campaign, although he did it ineffectively, very ineffectively, uh, yeah. was responsible for it took putting him forever this to out. get going. Yeah, and of course it was, uh, and he he did mention that hilarious photo of, of Obama looking like Ajemima in his uh, Somali gear, and um, yeah. So there's a you know there's a lot to say. We know nothing about Trump, about Barack Obama's background. So th- what? Why is that? It's not because there are all kinds of great things about him. They're hiding. Uh, we don't know anything about his his uh, his career in this country. Um, we don't know who promoted him all along. How he was able to go to uh, the most expensive private school in the country. His mother clearly a, a CIA asset, if not an operative. Um, it's it's uh, there's a lot. Very Obama comes from a very suspicious background, very suspicious, and that's why it's not covered. So he, I guess, he should have gone on the attack. He should have said, he should have, I, you know, you're calling on me to release my tax returns. How about releasing uh, everything about Mr. Obama's background, which you people have so uh, successfully hidden? Obama is not a popular guy. Anybody who loves Obama, how shall I put this, is never voting for Donald Trump. So I think, uh, of course, it would he'd be called a racist and all that, but he's called that anyway. Um, so I, I wish he had gone after that. He shouldn't have let her get away with it. He should have talked about – when he talked about it wasn't the Russians, he should have said, you know, a lot of people think it was the poor guy who was um, uh, mysteriously murdered. You're the insider at the DNC who actually was responsible for the leak. But you'll notice that um, Mrs. Clinton talks all the time about the Ruskies did it. It's like the Cold War coming – a monster coming out of the swamp. It's like something from the 50s, uh, her uh, very dangerous rhetoric on, on all of this. Um, but she doesn't want you to look at what was in these what was in these leaks. It's it's uh, how the DNC operates, the corruption, and the theft of the Bernie of the Bernie Sanders uh, nomination, or certainly of the theft of Bernie doing much much better than he was alleged to have done. Um, so she going to and and at the end he should have said is is you know if if the election was clearly rigged yes I'll support her but there's nothing wrong with investigating what happened and in talking about it and I'm just not going to sit down and salute her. Uh, if I feel that she and her cohorts have stolen the election, she's stolen elections in the past. We have to wait and see. Um, and the whole idea about whether you know I support her or not. Question is, did the American people actually support her? And my guess is, uh, no, they won't have supported her if if uh, you people in the media and the government all claim she won. Yeah, I mean, he did mention Bernie Sanders briefly. Not I think he could have stuck the knife in a bit oh, more on that. Not enough. Not enough. Yeah. And he did say that he's got the, the 56 neocon uh, uh, warmongers who, who had an ad denouncing him, Republican uh, neocon warmongers. And he could have said, you know, your fellow neocons, your fellow warmongers. He didn't go after her for being a very dangerous warmonger. She wants all these wars, and it's, you know, it's, it's morally bad. It's dangerous for the whole world. It's bad for the economy. Um, so he didn't do what he ought to. He didn't do what he ought to have done. I won't say he didn't do what he had to have done because I think he's got time in the in the subsequent debates. On the other hand, will as many people be watching this? I don't know. I I did notice, for example, in the Drudge poll afterwards that that he won, um, of course, with Drudge. Um, that seems to be many fewer people voted in this that had voted in the primaries. And I th- my guess is when we see the stats on the on the uh, viewership, we'll see that a lot of people tuned out of this. I think relatively few people watch the watch the whole ninety minutes. 
Tom, there were points at which if I hadn't been doing the show with you this morning, I wouldn't have watched the whole thing. No, of course. No, neither would I. A lot <laughs> but of it that's, was that's... very boring and stupid. And, yeah. And, of course, the audience was packed for her as they were not supposed to cheer and uh, uh, applaud her. But, of course, they did. And um, I don't believe for a minute that was, that was a uh, happenstance. Right. So um, – I did I, I, on the poll question. I did enjoy the ABC uh, uh, dot com poll that showed that Trump won, Gary Johnson came in second, Jill, Jill Stein third, and Hillary fourth. Oh, so that <laughs> okay. That's my favorite poll. Yeah, that's a pretty good poll. I remember. I normally I don't disclose the contents of emails people send me, particularly you. But last night we were confirming about today and, and the time that we were going to do it, and then. You came back with so boring. <laughs> I thought, okay, that's Lou's opinion as well. So I'm allowed to think that. All right, let's just pause for a quick message from our sponsor. Folks, reviewing the demographic statistics for the Tom Woods show reminds me that I have an awful lot of men listening to this show. I'll just leave it at that. And I'm willing to bet a lot of you men are shavers. And if you're like me, you want to have a nice close shave, but for some reason, you just can't get the blade to work the way it works for other people. They have this smooth shave and they look like they've got a baby's bottom for a face and you've got a face that's all hacked up and bloody and you look like you're in an axe murderer movie. Well, that does not happen for me anymore since I started using Harry's. Closest and most comfortable shave I've ever gotten. I don't have to use electric anymore. Now, here's a great chance for you to have the same experience I did. Harry's will send you their popular free trial set, which comes with a razor, a five-blade cartridge, and shaving gel. And all you got to do is pay three smackers for shipping. Plus, enter code WOODS at checkout, and they'll throw in a post-shave balm for free. So how about that? You get the razor, the five-blade cartridge, the shaving gel, and you enter code WOODS, and you get the post-shave balm for free. Head on over to harrys.com to grab this deal. That's H-A-R-R-Y-S, harrys.com, and use code WOODS. All right, Lou, there was a section of the debate on race, and again, I thought Trump was a bit weak here. Now, as you said, he should have responded to you know Hillary's thing about, look, we all judge people, and we're all racists, and so on. He should have said, look, Folks, if there are a lot of you in America who feel like you haven't yet been hectored enough by people who call you a racist, then she's your candidate. If you want four years of that, then you got it. And he, I thought he could have said, ladies and gentlemen, she just called uh, every person in America one of the deplorables. Yeah. I mean, jump at an opportunity like this. Yeah. So, I mean, that was she's handing the stuff to him on a silver platter. And so I posted, uh, I tweeted out a few things about what a disappointing debate performance it was. And I had all these uh, Trump people, but I mean like right wing, like alt right Trump people who are smart enough to know better, telling, you know, telling me what a traitor to America I am by pointing out that he should be crushing Hillary more than he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. He didn't okay? crush her at all, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. I mean, why can't you say that? Should have wiped the smirk off her face. Yeah, totally, totally. And he could, and he could have. Yeah, he to you totally could. And for heaven's sake, I don't know if Roger Stone, at the very least, who's not ideologically a libertarian, but he knows what works. Why is he not coaching him? Why is he not preparing him for this stuff? If, if that's, the, that's probably the best guy in his orbit for something like this. Well, you're right. No, Roger, uh, Roger's the man. Yeah, he, so uh, he should have been doing this. He has to be on the attack. Yes, he, he, he has to be careful because uh, she's a member of an official victim group. Um, but he should have attacked her. Everybody hates her. I think even a lot of the people who are for her hate her. Yeah. Even though they they just they don't like her. I mean, who, you know? And and uh, we needed a little bit more of the real Hillary. Uh, if uh, the folks remember uh, when she was recorded uh, cackling like a witch, uh, stirring the pot about uh, the murder of Gaddafi, the horrendous torture murder of Gaddafi. Yeah. And um, this is this is Hillary. And we know that the uh, you know there's the the famous Clinton corpse list of all the people who've died um, mysteriously and unexpectedly after opposing the Clintons or preparing to tell the truth about the Clintons. This is a very nasty bunch. Um, she's uh, I was going to call her like a mafia leader, but I don't want to criticize the mafia. Uh, she's she's a government leader. I mean, she's a killer. Uh, she's a monster. She's a witch. And uh, 
You got to you got to uh, expose that and and again wipe that smarmy smirk off her face. When the subject turned to race relations and uh, inner cities, Trump it took him forever to get there again, but he finally pointed he said politicians have failed these places. Politicians, politicians, politicians. Of course, what he should have been saying, because since he's running as a Republican, is Democrats, Democrats, Democrats. Yes. Now, those people probably are not going to vote for him, people living in those cities. Chances are, because they generally don't rep- vote Republican. But if he could have just said, look, just look at your life. Look around you. And this is the fruit of 50 years of Democrats governing you. Is your life so great right now <laughs> that you would say, I can't possibly risk this? Look, look at what they've done to you. Look, look at the look, look at the squalor you live in. You're telling me you're not willing to roll the dice one time after what these people have done to you. Hillary, you have no excuse. You look at these cities. Who's been in charge of these cities? Not Republicans. What possible excuse could you have for this? And again, nothing. Yes. Nothing. He has yeah. nothing like that. So again, for people who say, oh, oh, Woods, how dare you be critical of Trump? He's the great <laughs> savior of America. But the but he would be a better he would be an actual savior of America if he would actually say some true things when when push comes especially when she was saying how can Donald be so down on the black community why they've got the black churches and black businesses and and I would have been curious and of course he couldn't have said something this hot but oh yeah uh, Hillary name me one that you're going to move into because I'll help you move I'll get you the I, I, I'll get you a moving van tell me which one you're going to move into because they're all so wonderful after 50 years of democratic rule I bet you'll be moving in next week given all the vibrancy that's there now of course he can't say it quite that way but you can say something edgy well you could say that's certainly he, why you live in a walled house in Chappaqua yeah right exactly the exactly all, all instead, white Chappaqua he allows her to get away with murder even on that and for that matter, Obama's moving to an all-white gated community in Southern California after he gets out of the <laughs> – right? He's not moving how back to uh, south, the south side of Chicago. He never lived in the south side of Chicago. But Yeah, how about No, that? I think you have to – I think, yeah. I mean, and, and, of course, you're exactly right. Democrats have run all these places and run them into the ground. Um, so, Donald, uh, you've got two more chances. You better, yeah. you better take advantage <laughs> exactly. of them. Exactly. Tom is exactly right. Prepare, get Roger Stone in there to spend a couple days with you and to prep you for um, cutting her off at the knees. She, and, and you can do it without having people say, oh, my gosh, he criticized a woman. How dare he do that? Or, the, you know, or, or, or he criticized a black moderator. Um, he was, you know, Lester Holt was clearly on the Hillary team. There are even some people who think, and I, I mean people who, might be in the in, in the know. I can't say any more than that. Um, that there's the, the, some people feel that even she wasn't necessarily know, knew the questions in advance, but she sort of knew how things were going to go in advance. And um, you know, people, if she's going to be the president, you have every uh, you know every every reason to try to curry favor with her. So did Holt, or did somebody else in NBC uh, do that? It's very it's very possible. She certain. But again, you're right. She prepared heavily for this. Uh, she's done. This is the 40th such debate she's done. And um, in this, she knows what she's doing. But she is so vulnerable. Uh, Donald, uh, listen, replay what Tom has said in this in this talk, in this in this interview. <laughs> listen to what he's saying. She's very vulnerable, but you have to take her down. So, um, um, and, and look, it's it's like at this stage of, of American history, that's all you have against Hillary. I mean, I know you have Gary Johnson, but I mean, in terms of somebody who's going to come out swinging, unfortunately, this is it. So, I mean, I'd like to see him do well just because she's such a she needs to be crushed, basically. And then we'll deal with him later. But she's got to be crushed in front of a live audience. No, plenty wrong with with him, of course. Uh, but I think we both agree that she's far more dangerous, not only for our own country, but for the whole world. And uh, I think there's, I think there's a number of things wrong with her, not just physically, but I mean, uh, morally and spiritually. And she's a killer. She loves killing. These, of course, are the, oftentimes the people who rise to the top in the state. So far as we know, Donald Trump has never killed anybody. She's killed tens of thousands of people, maybe many more than that. She certainly has cheered on the killing of millions of people. So uh, what, a, what, a nasty, uh, what a nasty person. It's, 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 Donald, it's your duty, it's your moral duty to take her down. So 
listen to what Tom is saying, and go <laughs> after her. And, of course, the media is going to say, oh, oh, my gosh, you misogynist, you dared to criticize a woman. You know it what? doesn't matter. Nobody cares what the media is saying. Nobody. 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 I mean, bear in mind, Hillary gave that alt-right speech where she basically said, this guy is attracting <laughs> white supremacists on a huge scale and blah, blah, blah. And he's still ahead in the poll. So that goes to show to me, yeah, it'll still ruin your career if people call you certain names. But wow, she pulled out the worst thing you can say about anybody in our society. Much worse than saying you're a libertarian. You can, you can say you're a libertarian and you still can have a decent career. You can't say you're in the alt-right and you still have a decent career. And yet his poll numbers didn't – if if anything, they moved up slightly because people are sick and tired of it. So that's one, one favorable thing that maybe we'll have actual arguments and discussions with each other from now on instead of pointing and shouting, hey, this guy's a so-and-so. All right, well, where are his arguments wrong? Can you do that? Because when you just point and call people a name, it makes me think they might have a good argument. So why don't you actually deal with the arguments for a change? Then on the NATO thing, it's, it's unfortunately another – characteristic of Trump, that there are times when he'll say something that's pretty good, and then he walks it back, or he does the opposite, yeah. or he hires neocons for his foreign policy team, or he says NATO is outdated, or we don't need it, or something, and then he says, oh, I just meant its mission should be updated. We need it to go after <laughs> terrorism. It should follow us into the Middle East. What are you, what is the matter? What is the matter? It's a totally out of date, yeah. now bellicose alliance against an enemy that no longer exists. And how, how many more of these do we need? I mean, then he can go into his thing, even though our bridges aren't falling down, as, as David Stockman puts it. If he wants to go into that routine, he can say, our bridges are falling down, we got all these problems. The last thing in the world we need is to be fighting against phantom enemies. Say that. Well, it's exactly true. And I guess he can't say that the actual purpose of NATO is, of course, the U.S. occupying Europe and controlling Europe. That is the purpose of NATO from the very beginning. And had nothing to do with uh, stopping the Ruskies. I mean, as you know, uh, the Soviet Union was a economically pathetic, had never had the ability to roll into Western Europe and take over those countries against the U.S. and the, and the, uh, the Europeans. It's always nonsense. Even today, Russia's got the, uh, the GNP of, of, of Italy. How about pointing that out? The idea that, oh, my gosh, they're threatening the world and they're going to take over. And, you know, it's the whole uh, – it's, it's just like – I don't know. We're listening to Doctor Strangelove again. But time to look at that movie, or uh, Failsafe, or um, Executive Action, or uh, Seven Days in May. Some of those great movies from the '60s. Uh, you know, maybe it's all happening again. Trump is the only hope for stopping Hillary. He has to stop Hillary. If he doesn't, uh, I didn't like that pathetic remark that he'll be on Pennsylvania Avenue, even if it's just in his own hotel. Well, yeah, okay. Um, He's, he's got to take her down. Yeah. So, uh, and he's gotten this far. He beat all the other Republicans into the ground. And um, he obviously is a, he's a brilliant guy. He's not an intellectual, which is okay. Um, but in, in, in general, but if you're going to do this, you've got to have the right advisors and you've got to have, you've got to learn the right things. This is a guy, you know, you don't build a skyscraper just by not preparing for it. Anything he, anything he does in his business life, he is extremely detail-oriented, extremely well-prepared, knows every single thing that's going to happen, knows everywhere every dime is being spent. That's why he's so successful. But he's not treating this like that. He has to treat it again like he's, uh, uh, like he's, he's building, a, uh, building a building. I will say just a very funny thing that I got from Lynn Din, who's the Vietnamese-American uh, writer, um, some funny quotes from Trump. Right after the fall of the 9-11, on 9-11, right after the fall of the, fall of the buildings and very funny comments from him about how these buildings were made and uh, funny in retrospect and the immense amount of steel they had, why, uh, these why the windows were so small in these buildings because they had vast amounts of steel on the outside. He said that's virtually never the case. Usually the steel is just around the elevator shaft. He said these buildings were – he just didn't understand. He said there had to have been explosions – in the bill, this is, by the way, a couple of days afterwards before this became illegal to discuss this. Uh, he said there have to have been explosions or something else was going on. He said there's no way a, a plane could even get into the building through the steel structure of these buildings. So it's just, for, it's just from a, uh, an expert in building skyscrapers talking about these buildings. Um, this has never been – I don't believe he's ever discussed this again. Um, very, very interesting. I'll put that on, my, on the political theater blog today, his comments.
to get into something even more politically incorrect, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> if you can stand it. Yeah, I, I can more or less stand it. I, I, <laughs> I don't actually know what happened. The only thing I'm, I just will point out, like my views of the Kennedy assassination uh, and, and so many other things, my view of 9-11 is I don't believe the government story. As to actually what happened, I don't know. So, uh, uh, but I don't, I, uh, I, I always assume the government is lying, especially in instances like this. So they're not always lying, but it's a, it's a good, it's a safe assumption. They are lying until proven truthful. Uh, yeah, it's I'm a good to, starting point. I'm yeah, to think why, the why not? When was the last time they were proven truthful on how a war started or why they need a particular spending program? Uh, uh, there's no wonder Hillary's been successful in politics. She's such a demagogue and a liar. Uh, she's got to be stopped, Donald. It's your job. You're the only one who can do it. Get going. Yeah, right, right, right. Listen to Plus, Tom I mean, Woods. Call Tom <laughs> Woods as an advisor, as an economic advisor, and as a well, campaign advisor. Then you'd be sure of victory. Tom? I just want some entertainment here. You know, that's what I want. <laughs> you know, I know the political class will, you know, brush the dust off their, you know, off themselves and, and continue and carry on one way or another. But in the meantime, I at least want to see some interesting fireworks. And unfortunately, we didn't get that just yet. All right, Lou, I'm going to, of course, urge people to check out LouRockwell.com, in particular, Lou, L-E-W, LouRockwell.com. And then when you get there, click Political Theater because that's where the real sparks fly a lot of times over there. Thanks a lot, Lou. Let's get uh, what's the um, what's the order now? So the next one is October 9th and then the vice presidential debate or is yes, is I that think, how, I, yeah. believe, I believe that's right. By the way, I'll do something on on my podcast. Uh, it'll be um, Oh, okay, good. Won't be as good as having Tom Woods on, I should say. Oh, that's nice. Well, but look, I'll, I'll direct I'll, my I'll do a uh, an autopsy. Okay. And I'll probably have somebody to, uh, I'll be interviewing too. Again, okay, I'll try and direct some people over to that. Maybe, Tom, we can get the satellite to beam all this, you know, to the ship. We'll have to see. <laughs> well, the, the only – it's not so much that I physically couldn't do it from the ship. It's no, that no, I refuse to watch a presidential debate No, you're going to have – it's a great there. cruise. You and uh, – you're going to have uh, – this is the Contra – what? Contra Krugman cruise. It, it, it's the Contra cruise. That's right. Yeah. So oh, yeah, it's going to be tremendous. You and Bob but Murphy, we, it's uh, – everybody's going to have a great time. Yeah, except and, Krugman. And you people who didn't buy the ticket, tough luck. Yeah, that's right. You'll just have to wait and see if we choose to do another one. All right, Lou, thanks a lot. You know, maybe I don't know, maybe it should be a political theater cruise or something. I don't because you know what's funny, I'll say before we before we finish. The cruise is happening not, you know, basically 3 weeks before the election. So the cruise company, which also does the cruise for National Review and these in, you know, I think maybe Weekly Standard, they were saying, well, you sure you want to do it then? I mean, aren't your people going to be out campaigning or out involved in different races? I said, my people want to get on a ship and get the heck out of here during this time. You, know, you, you don't know our people. So anyway, we got a great bunch of folks. All right, Lou, thanks a lot. Thank you, Tom. All right, that's going to do it. But before we wrap things up for today, just a couple quick things. I want to tell you what we're doing tomorrow. Remind you that subscribing to The Tom Woods Show is going to make you a smarter libertarian because I bring such great people onto this show I become smarter every single day by listening to it. I got tens of thousands of people who have made listening to this show part of their daily routine. So become one of them. You'll see at tomwoods.com slash 746. Easy links to subscribe via iTunes and Stitcher. I want to point out that today, if you're listening to this today, the day of the release, September 27th, 2016, this is the last day of the Bluehost flash sale. I help people start websites and blogs so that we can dominate the internet more than we already do. And when people get their web hosting through my link, I give them a special boost by mentioning their site on my show and talking about it, giving them a coveted backlink on my site. I've got a million and a half backlinks, so that makes my site SEO gold for you to get linked to by me. I send you a couple of dozen video tutorials to get you started, and I give you the option of joining my private Facebook bloggers group. I have two private Facebook groups. One of them is for people who join, get their hosting through my link, and we plot and we answer each other's technical questions. We help each other out. We got uh, about 100 people in there so far, and it's a great group. So if any of that interests you, check out tomwoods.com slash publicity, and that'll show you exactly what you got to do. Very simple. Give you the link to join through, and today Bluehost is offering web hosting at just $2.95 a month. You can lock that in. That's crazy pricing, so you want to lock that in. And then you get all these goodies from me. So tomwoods.com slash publicity. Today's the day to do it while you can do it so cheaply. All right, tomorrow we're going to have Dave Howden on, the great economist, 
who's going to handle an objection that a listener was hearing from a friend, which is that after all, it's the middle class that creates jobs. It's the working class because those people go out and spend money in stores. Whereas the rich just sit there and let their money sit idly, or they shelter it overseas. And that goes to show they really aren't so valuable to us. What's really valuable is somebody's going to take that money, take his paycheck, and go blow it at the mall. That's what makes the economy go. Is that really so? We're going to look at that tomorrow here on the show. Then finally, this week, I am finally releasing yet another of my free ebooks. This one is going to be called Education Without the State. And I'll tell you exactly how to get it, take you two seconds to get it, and it's going to give you a lot of ammunition and help you understand that question better. So a lot of reasons to keep on listening. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.